Air Rifle Range Layout To be safe on a range, shooters need to understand how the range is laid out and what the functions of the different parts of the range are. Target Backstops Target Backstops, or target holders, corresponding to each firing point are placed at the front of the range. They hold the targets for firing and capture the fired pellets. Firing Line The firing line is a line that designates the forward limit of where shooters can stand while they are shooting. Firing Distance The distance from the target backstops to the firing line must be 10 meters or 33 feet. Firing Points Sections of the firing line are designated for each shooter to occupy while they are shooting. The target backstops and firing points are numbered. Safety Barrier Ranges must have a safety barrier on the two side walls and front behind the target backstops of the range. The safety barrier must be capable of keeping someone from entering the range from the outside during firing. Range Officer Station the range officer works in the area immediately behind the firing points. Ready line. On some ranges, a ready line is established to limit the forward movement of persons waiting to fire or of spectators and visitors. The area behind the line is designated as the ready area. Range rules. There are a few rules that govern the operation of a range. Range officer. Whenever range firing takes place, an adult range officer must be on the range and is in charge of the activity. The range officer controls the activity by giving commands and instructions. Firing point. Areas on the firing line are designated as firing points. One firing point is designated for each person who is firing. Target holder slash backstop. There are target holders and backstops that correspond to each firing point. The shooter's targets are hung on the target holder. Firing line. During firing, no one can go forward of the firing line that is at the front of the firing points. When a shooter is in a firing position, no part of the shooter's body that touches the floor may be ahead of the rear edge of the firing line. Ready line. If there is a ready line on a range, it is located behind the firing points and range officer station. The area behind the ready line is called the ready area. Persons who are not firing or assisting shooters on the line must remain behind the ready line in the ready area. Anyone who is watching the firing activities as a spectator must also remain behind the ready line when firing is taking place. Basic Range Commands there are four basic range commands that are used by the range officer to start and stop all live firing activities. Shooters must know exactly what these commands mean and be prepared to respond instantly to them. Load. After the range officer has given the shooters on the firing line an opportunity to prepare for firing, he will give the command load. This means that it is okay to charge the air rifle with gas, okay, to insert a pellet in the breech and OK to close the rifle action. Start. As soon as the command load is given, the command start is given. This command means that it is now OK to begin firing. It also means that it is OK to continue firing additional shots until the firing exercise is complete. It is not necessary to have a new command to load and start for each shot. Stop. This command means that firing is no longer authorized. The command stop is given when firing is complete or is no longer authorized. Sometimes it must be given in an emergency. Whenever the command stop is given and you are still attempting to fire a shot, you must immediately stop trying to fire the shot by taking your finger off of the trigger. Then open the rifle action and follow additional instructions that the range officer may give. Unload. The command stop is normally followed by the command unload. When all firers have finished, stop unload means that firing is finished and the range officer is going to check for all rifles to be grounded with CBIs inserted. If a shooter still has a loaded rifle 
when a stop command is given, he or she must immediately raise their hand and tell the range officer that they have a loaded rifle. The range officer will then instruct them as to how the rifle should be unloaded. Safety definitions. Here are some terms that shooters will hear as part of the instructions they receive on the firing line. Shooters need to know and understand these terms. Line is hot. When the range officer is ready to start a firing exercise and he determines that everyone on the range is in a safe and proper location, he will declare the line is hot. No one can go or be forward of the firing line when the line is hot. Changeover period. After the range officer declares that the line is hot, and inform shooters that they can handle their rifles, he will instruct them that they can begin their changeover period for the firing exercise that follows. When a range officer starts the changeover period, this means that shooters can remove their CBIs from their rifles, close their air rifle actions, place the rifle in a shooting position, and dry fire in that position. They may not, however, charge the rifle with gas or load a pellet in it. Unloaded Rifle When a firing activity is complete, or when the command stop is given, the rifle must be unloaded. For an air rifle, unloaded means that the action is open, there is no pellet in the barrel, and the CBI is inserted. The CBI, of course, is proof that there is no pellet in the barrel. Grounded Rifles Rifles must normally be grounded when they are brought to the firing line, and they must be grounded again after a firing exercise is complete. To ground a rifle, the action must be open. It must be placed on the floor or shooting mat with a CBI inserted. Once a rifle is grounded, a shooter must request permission from the range officer before it can again be handled for any purpose. Firing line is clear. When all rifles are grounded on the firing line before or after firing, the range officer must check them to be sure they are unloaded with CBIs inserted. The range officer can then declare that the line is clear. This means all rifles are grounded and no one is permitted to handle the rifles. The line must be clear before anyone can be instructed to go forward and hang, change, or retrieve targets. Safe Loading Procedure The safe loading procedure described here is designed to assure the highest level of safety throughout the process of charging the air rifle's gas system and loading a pellet in preparation for firing. While loading the air rifle, consider these things. Always be aware of where the muzzle is pointing during the entire loading process. Be sure to keep it pointed downrange. Always start with an open action and an unloaded air rifle. Never load a pellet first and then charge the rifle with air. Even if the air rifle being used has a safety, the safety should not be used during the loading process. On a target range, the safety is the open bolt. As long as the bolt is open during the loading process, the rifle cannot be unintentionally fired. Facilitate the loading process by placing the pellet container in a convenient location so that during the loading process, it is not necessary to reach a long distance to pick up another pellet. When loading a DAISY M853 or other DAISY air rifle, be sure to place the pellet in the loading port, as shown in the illustration, and not in the bolt slot, as this will cause the rifle to malfunction. Dry firing is an important part of the shooter's preparation and practice because it permits the shooter to rehearse the shot before actual shots are fired. Not all air rifles are capable of being dry fired, however. If an air rifle cannot be dry fired, it is still possible to rehearse shots by holding it in position and pressing the trigger to the rear to simulate firing. Note especially that dry firing is not permitted anywhere on a range except when rifles are on the firing line and the range officer authorizes or instructs shooters to handle their rifles 
and begin preparation for firing. To dry fire air rifles, follow these instructions. At Mid Pacific, we use the Daisies uh, M853s and M753s. Open the bolt and then close it without loading a pellet or charging the cocking lever or pumping the rifle. Uh, this will cock the trigger and allow it to be dry fired. Uh, we don't have any XS40s, uh, we don't use the 888s, and the Crossman Challengers are not capable of being dry fired. We need to remember that it is never permissible to discharge compressed air or CO2 during dry firing as it violates safety and competition rules. Range safety procedures malfunctions. A malfunction occurs when a gun fails to fire. If you are in a firing exercise and the air rifle you are using malfunctions, follow the steps described here. Keep your rifle muzzle pointed down range. Remain in position with the muzzle pointed down range and do not attempt to come off the firing line with your rifle. Raise your hand so the range officer can see it. Wait for the range officer to come to you. He or she will inspect the rifle and may ask questions about what happened. The range officer will give you instructions to try to fire the shot again or may take the rifle from you to clear it so it can be removed from the firing line. Range procedures require that whenever a rifle malfunctions, it must be unloaded. That is, the pellet must be removed from the barrel before the rifle can be taken from the line. The range officer may use a clearing rod or dowel rod to remove the pellet from a malfunctioning rifle. Range safety procedures. Firing completed. Normally, the range officer will instruct you regarding how many shots you are to fire in a range activity. When you finish firing the prescribed number of shots, follow these procedures to make your rifle safe and show the range officer that you are finished. Immediately open your air rifle action after you fired your last shot. Then place your rifle down on the floor, shooting mat or bench. After the rifle is placed down, insert the CBI in it. Follow instructions. The range officer will tell you whenever you should step back from your firing point or remain on the firing point by your grounded rifle. When all firers are finished and have grounded their rifles, the firing line should look something like the photo on the right where rifles are laying on the mat with CBIs inserted and with muzzles laying ahead of the firing line. Range safety procedures. Loaded rifle after stop unload. Occasionally, a situation will arise where a shooter still has a loaded rifle after the command stop unload has been given. If this happens to you, follow these procedures. Never attempt to fire a shot after the stop command is given. Remain in position and keep your muzzle pointed down range. Raise your hand so the range officer can see it. Announce loaded rifle so that the range officer can hear you. Wait for the range officer to come to you. The range officer will give you instructions for firing the rifle to unload it. Normally, he or she will either tell you to fire the rifle into an open area in the backstop or instruct you to fire the rifle into a pellet discharge container. After you discharge the rifle, open the action, place the rifle on the floor, mat or bench, and insert a CBI. Personal safety and hygiene. Pellet handling. Lead is a toxic substance that must be handled with care, but so far, no one has been able to make air rifle pellets from a non-lead substance that have been sufficiently accurate for precision target shooting. Fortunately, several medical tests on air rifle shooters have proven that when shooters take the necessary precautions when firing air rifles, they do not face any health risk from this limited exposure to lead. These precautions include eating no food on the range, not having open beverage containers on the range, and washing your hands immediately after every range activity. Hands should preferably be washed in cold water with soap. Safety glasses. At Mid-Pacific, we are required to wear safety glasses while firing air rifles. 
Prescription glasses are adequate as eye protection. Anyone who wears eyeglasses for distant vision should wear them while shooting. Hearing protection. Air rifles do not generate sufficient sound to cause hearing loss and using hearing protection is optional. Personal clothing. At Mid-Pacific, we require that all air rifle shooters wear a well-fitting sweatshirt and a long pair of pants, such as jeans. We also use a special shooting glove on our hand that supports the weight of the air rifle. Hello, welcome to the second half of the air rifle safety training video. In this part of the video, we're going to be going over some of the different parts of the shooting range as well as some different commands that the range officer is going to give. Normally I would like to do this on an actual shooting range or at mid-pack. However, due to the COVID situation, we don't have access to any of those facilities. So what I've done is to create a makeshift range in the back of my house. And some things that you'll see today will be similar to the sh actual shooting ranges that you'll be uh, shooting on. Some things may be different, but all the different parts and concepts uh, should apply to those ranges as well. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different parts of the shooting range. If we take a look at this long line right here, this is what we call the firing line. The firing line is the forward most limit that you can stand while you're shooting. You'll see these two short uh, parallel lines that are running in this direction. This makes what we call a firing point. Each shooter will have their own firing point and it will correspond to a target that is downrange. Normally, these would have a number uh, that also matches up with a number posted on the target downrange. The distance between the firing line and the target is 10 meters or approximately 33 feet. When we refer to this distance, we refer to it as downrange. So right now, let's take a look at what's downrange. If we look on our sides, we have walls. We can also refer to these as safety barriers. And basically what they're meant to do is to prevent people from accidentally wandering downrange while we are shooting. If we look at this gray wooden frame, this is what we call a target frame. It is what we use to hold our target. Uh, this white sheet of paper with uh, 10 record bullseyes on it, that's our target. If we look in the back of the target, we have a wall. In this case, uh, that wall is what we call our backstop. The backstop is basically meant to contain any errant shots or any pellets that miss the actual target. We don't normally shoot at the backstop. It's just there uh, in an emergency. Normally, when we look at these targets, you can see that there's this metal sheet that's made to absorb uh, the majority of our pellets. In fact, if we take this entire thing off, we can see inside uh, the target frame is some um, shot pellets. And normally we'd hang uh, this cardboard backer with a paper target on it like this. As I was editing this video, I realized that I misspoke about what the safety barriers and backstops are. So the safety barriers are the walls that are highlighted in green, and the backstop is the metal sheet that has the red square drawn on it. The safety barriers 
are there to prevent people from accidentally entering the range and also to capture any errant shots that completely miss the target. The metal sheet, the backstop, goes directly behind the targets that we intentionally are shooting at and that is what absorbs the majority of the shots that we take. So once again, uh, just to be totally clear, green is the safety barrier and the red square is the backstop. At mid-pack, because we shoot inside of the cafeteria and it is dark, you'll normally have a light uh, somewhere on the ground or uh, light bars running parallel to the target stands. As we make our way to the back of the range, some ranges will have something called a ready line. Uh, in this case, my ready line is this short blue line. Basically what the ready line is, is the area where we have to leave all of our stuff, all of our equipment when we are not using it. So since I'm not using my offhand stand right now, it is behind the ready line. Since I'm not using my gun case right now, it is behind the ready line. We don't want to leave this directly behind the firing line because we do not want to create any sort of congestion. So if we look at the person who's highlighted in red, this is what we call the range officer. The range officer is the person who is in charge of keeping everyone on the line safe. They are also responsible for giving out the different commands. The range officer will always be behind the shooters while they are on the line. All right, so I want to talk about the firing line just a little bit more. The firing line is one of the most important parts of the range because it dictates the forward-most limit that we can stand when we are shooting at the targets. Whenever we are shooting, we want to be as close to our target as possible. So, uh, if I were on the line and I were doing some sort of uh, shooting activity, I would want to get as close to the front of the line as I can. Now, that being said, I don't ever want to put my body in front of the firing line. Uh, specifically my feet. Per the rules, when a shooter is in a firing position, no part of the shooter's body that touches the floor may be ahead of the rear edge of the firing line. So basically what that means is that when I'm shooting, both of my feet have to be on this side of the line. I cannot have one foot on this side of the line and one foot in front of it. Both my feet have to be behind it. Also, uh, whenever people are on the, the firing line and they're shooting, we don't ever want to cross this line for any reason. When people are on the firing line and they're shooting, that's when the firing line is hot. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Just keep in mind that whenever you see a firing line and whenever you see people handling their rifles uh, behind the firing line, you usually do not ever want to go in front of it for any reason, even if they're not shooting. For us, when we need to go downrange and pass in front of the line, the range officer or coach will usually give us uh, very specific instructions to go downrange and service the targets. Okay, so just a couple more rules about the range. Uh, the range officer, whenever range firing is taking place, you should have an adult range officer present. For mid pack, the range officer will usually be coach. should always listen to the range officer as they're the ones who are in charge of keeping people on the line safe. Uh, now I'd like to talk about some basic range commands. Okay, so for range commands, there are four basic commands. First command is load. 
Second command is start. Third command is stop. Fourth command is unload. So what does it mean to load? Load means that it is okay to charge the gas mechanism. It is okay to insert a pellet and it is okay to close the action. Start means that it is okay to begin firing and it is okay to continue firing. Stop. When you hear the stop command, immediately stop trying to fire the shot. Take your finger off the trigger. You also want to open your action. When you hear the stop command, firing is no longer authorized and you should follow the instructions of the range officer. Unload command. After the unload command is declared, the range officer must confirm that all rifles are in an unloaded condition. Uh, now I'm gonna try to demonstrate what some of these commands mean. All right, so let's go over what some of these uh, very basic commands mean. So the first command is to load. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove my CBI. So after I hear the command load, that means that I can open my action, pull it back, take a pellet, insert it into the chamber, close the bolt, and this is as far as I can go with the load command. When I hear the start command, that means that I can go ahead um, and take my loaded rifle, bring it up into the firing position, and start firing. Depending on my course of fire, I can continue to fire. When I hear the stop command, I am going to take my finger off the trigger and open the action. There are a couple different reasons we could hear the stop command. One is that the time limit for our course of fire has run out and we're required to stop. Or two, there could be an emergency happening. Uh, someone may have accidentally wandered down range, uh, in which case we do not want to continue shooting while they are down range. Someone, most likely the range officer, would declare stop, and immediately after we hear that, we would take our fingers off the trigger. So let's say that I was aiming the rifle, getting ready to shoot, and I hear the command stop. I'm immediately gonna take my finger off the trigger. Then I'm gonna put my rifle down and open the action. Because we know that uh, with an open action and our fingers off the trigger, our rifle is unable to be fired. The last command is unload. Typically, we'll hear unload after the command stop. So it'll be something like stop, unload, at which point I would put my rifle down, open the action all the way, get my CBI, insert it into the back of the barrel, run it all the way through, and then ground my rifle. So before I move on, one more thing that I would like to clarify about the stop command is that anyone can call this. If you see a dangerous situation about to happen, you have as much power as the range officer does to call stop. Sometimes the range officer may not see that situation about to occur. Only you do. So if, like, let's say you see someone about to walk down range. You should, in a very loud and clear voice, yell, stop, loud enough so that the range officer can hear it and loud enough so that the other people who are on the firing line can also hear it. Uh, 
Uh, now I'd like to transition into some basic safety definitions. Okay, so now I'd like to go over some basic safety definitions. First definition is the line is hot. When the line is hot, that means that no one is allowed to go in front of the firing line. It also means that the line is ready for firing activities to take place. Uh, the range officer is the one who will make the determination if the line can be hot or not. The next definition is for our preparation slash changeover period. During this time, it is okay to remove our CVIs. It's okay to close the bolts and dry fire. We cannot, however, charge gas or load a pellet. So what does that mean? That means that during the changeover period, uh, usually the changeover period is called uh, between courses of fire. So we do things like uh, adjusting our rifles or setting up our stands. But during the changeover period, I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to go as far as to pick up my rifle, remove the CBI, aim my rifle, close the bolt, even go as far as to pull the trigger all the way, as if I were firing uh, a live, live fire. What I am not allowed to do is to pull my bolt all the way to the rear, load a pellet, and fire an actual pellet. If your rifle has the ability to be dry fired, you can go ahead and dry fire. Next definition is for an unloaded rifle. Uh, an unloaded rifle is when we have our actions open, no pellet in the barrel, and our CBI has to be inserted. Next definition is for a grounded rifle. When a rifle is grounded, it needs to be unloaded. Whenever the rifle is grounded, they must be brought to the firing line and have their muzzles pointed downrange. Usually the muzzles need to be in front of the firing line. And once the rifle is grounded, uh, you can no longer handle it without permission from the range officer. The line is clear. So what this definition is, is the rifles are unloaded, they are grounded, and the range officer has verified that they have a CBI inside of their barrels. And even though the rifles are on the firing line, no one can handle them when the line is clear. Sometimes people will call this the line is safe. Uh, whenever we hear that the line is safe or that the line is clear, uh, we cannot uh, touch the rifles. Usually after the line is clear, we'll be given instructions. Uh, sometimes those instructions will be to go down range and service the target, uh, which is why no one can handle their rifles. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the safe loading procedure. So the rifle that I'm using has a slightly different loading procedure than the pump uh, daisy rifles do. Although the idea uh, behind both of these is sort of the same. So when I'm ready to shoot, I need to be sure that I'm being safe when I load the rifle. So I can remove the CBI. Uh, the range officer has called load start, so I can start shooting. When I'm loading, first thing I'm gonna do is to open my action, pull the bolt all the way to the rear, and if I were using something like the pump rifles, I would then charge air into it and go through my pumping motion. Because the crossbands are pre-charged pneumatics, I don't have to do that. The next thing that I will do after I charge air into the rifle is to take my pellet, put it into my breech, close the bolt, seal the chamber, finger off the trigger. I'm gonna bring the rifle up 
Aim at the target. You'll notice that when I brought the rifle up, there was very little movement between bringing it from the offhand stand into position. The reason that I don't want to point my rifle up like this or anywhere else is because it is loaded. What I like to tell people is that the front sight or the muzzle of your rifle should not go any higher than the top of the target frame. So now that the rifle is loaded, you bring it into position, go through my shot process. Take my finger off the trigger, put the rifle down, open my action, and repeat. So I'm going to load one more shot. Finger off the trigger, bring it into position, go through my shot process. Notice how I'm keeping my finger off the trigger until I'm ready to shoot. So that's our correct loading procedure. Okay, so just to clarify what I meant by keeping our muzzle below the top of the target frame. Sometimes when people load, they'll like to do something like this, where they point the muzzle up in the air and drop it down to bring it into position. At mid-pack, we don't want to do that because we have glass windows uh, close to our ceiling. So what I'm going to do is to very gently get into position and bring the rifle up without uh, bringing the muzzle higher than the top of the wooden stand. Okay, so let's go over dry firing. On certain rifles, you'll be able to dry fire the rifle. Basically what that means is that you can cock the hammer to the rear, close the bolt, pull the trigger, and release the hammer. On the daisy rifles, doing this will not expel any air and you'll just hear a click. So basically, you'll do something where you pump the rifle, or I'm sorry, you'll do this thing where you pull the bolt back, push it forward, bring the rifle up, aim, click, and that's what a dry fire would be. There is no pellet and no air going down your barrel. With the rifle like the Crossman Challenger, I don't have the ability to dry fire it. So all I'm going to do, uh, if I were in something like the changeover period where it is okay to dry fire my rifle, I would just close the bolt and go through uh, whatever aiming processes I go through. And I can even uh, put my finger on the trigger and go through my... Uh, triggering procedures. Okay, so now we're gonna go over some different safety procedures. So this is a safety procedure if we have a malfunction. So let's say that I was bringing the rifle up, it was loaded, uh, I charged air into it, I was aiming, I was uh, pulling the trigger back, getting ready to fire, and all I hear is click. The rifle didn't fire. This would be considered a malfunction. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put my rifle down while keeping it pointed at the target. I'm going to raise my hand, get the attention of the range officer, and then wait for the instruction of the range officer. Another safety procedure would be if we completed our shooting or if a stop command was called and we still had a pellet lodged in the chamber. If there's a pellet that's lodged in our chamber or somewhere in our barrel and we cannot put our CBI through, we're gonna raise our hands again while keeping the 
muzzles pointed down range, get the attention to the range officer, and then tell them that we have a loaded rifle. Sometimes you can raise your hand and if the range officer uh, doesn't see you, then you can say loaded rifle and then they should come over to you uh, to help you resolve the problem. Usually what they'll do is that they'll get a small wooden dowel and try to push the pellet out of your barrel. Sometimes uh, if it's still safe, they will just have you fire that pellet uh, into the cardboard backstop. Okay, so now we're going to go over our seizure when we are done shooting. So let's say that uh, we're shooting during our course of fire, fire our last shot, now we are done. So as always, we're going to open our actions. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is to get our CBI. Insert it into the action. And then ground our rifle. Once our rifle is grounded, uh, we can raise our hand and ask the range officer if it is okay for us to walk off the line. Some ranges require you to do this, some don't. If we're just in something like a practice, as long as your rifle is made safe and it is grounded, uh, it is appropriate for you to walk off the line. So this just about wraps up the air rifle safety training video. Well, before I go, I wanted to go over a couple of hygiene and dress code items with you. So in air riflery, the pellets that we use are made out of lead, and when we handle them, we get some of that residue on our fingers. Uh, that lead residue, if ingested, can lead to lead poisoning, and we don't want that to happen to anyone. So we require that after you're done shooting, you go and wash your hands with cold soap and water. Using things like hand sanitizer does not work. All that does is it smears the lead residue around on your hands. The air rifles that we use are not loud enough to damage our hearing, so we do not require that people wear hearing protection. However, some people may choose to wear things like earplugs to help them drown out the outside noise because it helps them to focus better. At Midpack, we also require that everyone who is on the firing line have some sort of safety glasses on. If you're like me and you have prescription glasses, these are also appropriate. The risk for eye injuries is extremely low. We just want it just in case. It's also required that you wear a long pair of pants, well-fitting pants like jeans, and that you have closed-toed shoes like these. Uh, tennis shoes, walking shoes, or skater shoes are all appropriate. We just can't wear boots uh, because the rules prohibits anything that gives us uh, support around our ankles. This concludes the air rifle safety training video. I hope that you were able to learn something from it. And I wish you luck on your upcoming safety test. Thank you for watching this video.